All right, gather around everyone. Today, I'm gonna tell you about a wild movie from 2020 called The Hunt. Brace yourself for some spoilers, but I'll keep it fun and light. So, we start with Athena, our main character, at her desk, just texting away. She's sending funny pictures to her friends, the usual stuff. But then, things get interesting. They start talking about something called the manor and the hunt. Sounds intriguing, right? Meanwhile, up in the air, a fancy flight attendant checks on a guy, offering him fancy fish eggs. But he's not interested. He says, no, give me something simpler. He chooses champagne instead, classic. But just as she's about to open it, bam, someone else bursts in, startling everyone. The champagne guy says, looks like the party started. While an older man, trying to be the hero, jumps up claiming he's a doctor. But instead of helping, he stabs the intruder with a knife. Talk about shocking. Just when you think it couldn't get wilder, Athena comes in and, get this, stabs the intruder with her high heel. People around say, it's not even showtime yet. Athena, calm as ever, cleans her shoe and says, there's no place for softness in war. The doctor isn't done yet. He drags the intruder to another room. The guy's still alive, calling for help. But the blonde he tries to wake up? Totally knocked out. Next scene, the blonde wakes up outside, gagged, like in a classic rescue scene. She sees another woman across a river making a compass. Smart survival skills. But when she follows a man who appears, she ends up at a field with a big box. Everyone gathers around like it's a party. But instead of food, a pig pops out. Surprise. Then, they find weapons. Our clever blonde starts unlocking gags for everyone. Our group of unlikely friends, including a blonde lady, suddenly find themselves hiding for safety. Bullets are everywhere. And just when the blonde lady thinks she's safe, bang, she's hit. In the chaos, one brave person shoots back but, spoiler alert, gets taken down. The others? They're lying flat on the ground trying to stay hidden. Suddenly, one woman tries to run away, but she's unlucky. She falls into a ditch. It turns out she's not just down. She's stuck on something sharp but still alive. A man runs over to help her. And just as they think they're about to escape, boom, a landmine explodes ruining their escape plan. Meanwhile, another man has better luck, running to a fence. Just as he's ready to confront someone sneaking up, he realizes it's just the man who opened the box earlier. A few more from their group reach the fence, but as they jump to safety, Mr. Box gets hit with a spear, just before he confronts his attackers in a final battle. Spoiler, it doesn't end well for him. The three survivors find a quiet gas station, run by a couple who think they are robbers. Relax, we just want to know where we are, says the man in the blue shirt. They find out they're in Arkansas. He asks to use the phone, not knowing it's a trap. As the woman eats a cookie, something is wrong. She starts choking as if it's filled with more than nuts. In a move like in a horror movie, the couple puts on gas masks and throws a smoke grenade. Before the man in the blue shirt can react, he's knocked out. The gas takes out another person, and just like that, two more are gone. The gas station couple cleans up, getting rid of the bodies as if they're throwing out old clothes. The woman notices the man in the blue shirt's wedding ring, feeling a bit guilty, but her husband dismisses it, saying the fallen man was probably a bad guy anyway. Now this couple is arguing about the complex issues of racism. Suddenly, their quiet argument is interrupted by a sharp call over the radio. Watch out, warns the voice on the other end. Another target is coming your way. The couple quickly prepares, turning their ordinary gas station into a trap. When Crystal walks in, she's greeted with fake smiles. She stays cool, asking for a pack of cigarettes and taking out her emergency cash. By the way, what state am I in? She asks casually as she gets her change. Something about the couple's answer seems off. In a moment, Crystal's survival instincts take over. She grabs the shotgun hidden under the counter and quickly, the husband and then his wife fall. Now Crystal is not just there for cigarettes. She's a force to be reckoned with. After handling the couple, she checks the station, grabs some rubber bands and extra bullets, and leaves her jacket behind. Outside, a truck catches her eye, but there's a catch. She notices fake license plates with Croatian details underneath. And what's this? A tripwire connecting the door to a bomb. Talk about a dangerous welcome. Hiding in the bushes, Crystal listens to the snatched radio. The voice panics. We can't find Bob and Linda from the gas station. Soon, a drone flies overhead, looking for any signs of life. But it's quickly brought down by a mysterious man who then destroys it completely. As he approaches the rigged truck, Crystal confronts him. You just blew our cover with that drone, she says sharply, then points to some nearby train tracks she spotted earlier. This way, she orders. 
and the man, caught in the moment, follows her. As they walk, he shares his thoughts on why they are being hunted like animals in a cruel game. The guy was going on about a wild idea he read somewhere, that some powerful people were playing a deadly game of hide-and-seek in a fancy house. Crystal didn't believe it. As the train moved on, they found a group of people hiding. The guy, caught up in his wild ideas, called them fake crisis actors because they didn't speak English. Crystal just rolled her eyes. His ideas were more confusing than a twisted snack at a carnival. Suddenly, like in a movie, the train stopped. Military police came in to check everyone. The guy tried to act like a hero, telling the police that he and Crystal were real Americans, and the others were just pretending. Plot twist. The cops didn't understand any English. Then, one of the people they called actors spoke perfect English, telling them they didn't believe his story. Things got tense very quickly. The guy, desperate to prove he was right, put a grenade in the English-speaking person's pants. Everyone hid, and then boom. It was like a movie explosion, but real. Next thing, Crystal was in a truck, heading to what seemed like a camp for refugees. At the camp, she tried to figure out where she was. No one would tell her. She guessed until she got it right. Croatia. She asked for the American embassy, hoping to get out of this crazy situation. Instead of help from the embassy, another guy named Don showed up. Another supposed victim of the hunt. They went to the camp kitchen, where Don started talking about the same wild theories. Just when Crystal thought she'd be stuck listening to these theories like new campfire stories, someone from the American embassy came to take them away. So there they are, racing through the woods in a car with an embassy official who's just learned all about their wild chase. Don has told everything, and the official is ready to call the State Department and get the military involved. But Crystal? She feels something's not right about this official, thinking he seems shadier than a cheap tuna sandwich. Suddenly, Crystal decides to take no risks. She punches the official, pushes him out of the car, and then, for good measure, drives over him. When she checks his jacket, she finds a gun. Meanwhile, as she's searching the car trunk, Don's freaking out, thinking she just attacked an embassy person. But then, he sees it. The body of another guy who was with Crystal earlier, dead in the trunk. Holding a map now, Don's nervous, thinking it's just the two of them left. He wants to escape fast, but Crystal has a plan. She wants to use the map to find their pursuers and hit back. She tells a scary story her mom used to tell her about getting revenge, just as a wild pig appears out of nowhere, cut to the place where their pursuers are hiding, talking about what's right to say. There's a soldier among them, trying to keep order, but they're just making fun of him. Suddenly, Athena's voice comes through the radio, telling everyone to be quiet. Then things get really wild. One of the pursuers steps outside. That's Don's moment. He uses the pig to distract the man, and Crystal does what she's best at. Back at the hiding spot, they hear noise outside. The soldier tries to organize everyone, but they're all over the place and scared. When Don throws the pig inside, they mistakenly shoot it. One of the women gets mad about the pig, but that's when Crystal creates mayhem, taking down one person after another. It's like a showdown with bullets and knives until it's just her and the soldier left, facing off. Crystal, tough as ever, pulls a pipe from the ceiling and hits him, but decides to spare him. Just as she's about to confront the loud woman who insulted her, Don shows up. What a wild ride, right? Don finds a gun, and during a tense moment, Crystal tells him to ask the woman why they are in this dangerous game. The woman gives a weak excuse and Crystal is eager to shoot her. But Don, trying to be brave, asks for mercy because the woman is female. Crystal questions whether being a woman should save her. The woman barely says no before Crystal firmly shoots her. Don is shocked. Suddenly, Athena's voice comes through the radio, adding more confusion. Did you get Crystal? She asks. As Crystal aims at Don, he nervously says he's not working with Athena. Athena keeps urging Don to shoot Crystal, but Crystal quickly shoots Don instead. Crystal calmly tells Athena over the radio that Don won't respond anymore. Athena coldly invites Crystal to find her. Crystal then talks politely with a soldier who is still alive. She tries to learn where Athena is hiding, but the soldier doesn't want to talk. Crystal pushes on his injury to make him talk. Hurt, he tells her, but warns that Athena has been planning this for months. Crystal quickly ends his suffering too. A year ago, in Athena's stylish office, two worried business leaders talk about a risky message Athena sent about the hunt. A joke that spread too far. They tell her it could be a PR disaster, and suggest she should resign. Athena, unconcerned, asks for a list of people who believe the rumor that she hunts people for fun. Eight months before the hunt, a mysterious group meets to choose the unlucky people who will be part of their cruel game. It's clear that this nightmare was planned for a long time. The group choosing their next targets for the hunt is having trouble deciding. Athena, getting impatient, urges them to choose. Suddenly, as they look at potential candidates, a photo of Crystal appears. The person presenting reads her harsh views about Athena. 
This annoys Athena, and with an angry look, she points at the screen and says, That's the one. She's my new enemy. Jump to today. Crystal is walking towards a large house, determined. Athena's voice comes from an intercom, giving a stern warning. Leave the gun at the gate, or deal with the hidden explosives. Crystal hesitantly leaves her gun, and goes inside. As she enters, music by Beethoven plays, adding drama. Crystal carefully walks through the fancy hallway, seeing photos of herself and others who have been hunted. A creepy collection of Athena's interests. In the kitchen, Athena is cooking calmly, as if she's getting ready for a dinner rather than a fight. She casually asks about Don, leaving Crystal unsure if he was really against her. The tension grows as it's clear neither woman really knows the other. They discuss the reasons for the hunt. Crystal mocks Athena, highlighting the ridiculousness of turning a conspiracy theory into a deadly reality. And the twist? Athena has targeted the wrong Crystal. The person who spread horrible theories online just shared her name but was someone else entirely. As they realize this, the tension rises. Crystal quickly grabs a knife. A fierce fight follows, with both women equally strong and angry, their battle ringing through the house. Crystal, always quick, throws everything she can reach at Athena, including a very expensive bottle of champagne. Athena, very quick herself, catches it before it can break. Their fight gets more intense with Crystal pushing Athena toward the fireplace. Athena quickly gets up, grabs a shotgun, and chases Crystal upstairs. They fight over the gun, but Crystal manages to push Athena down the stairs and jumps after her. Athena, never giving up, grabs a knife and stabs Crystal. They fight their way out of the house, ending up back in the kitchen where Athena tries to hit Crystal with a vegetable cutter. But as Athena kicks, Crystal pulls her in and turns the knife on her. Athena falls, finally defeated. Crystal, hurt but still going, eats some toast, and then, in a clever move, uses a blowtorch to seal her wound. She dresses up in one of Athena's stylish dresses and shoes, adding insult to injury. As she leaves the place of her victory, Crystal takes the saved bottle of champagne. Outside, Athena's private jet is waiting like in a movie. Crystal boards, tells the surprised flight crew she's now in charge, and tells them to take her home. Sitting in her luxurious seat, Crystal opens the champagne. Wanting some company after her tough time, she invites the flight attendant to share some food and a drink with her. A toast to the survivor the new queen of the skies.